Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mini, a true nerd, and welcome to Orwell, the nightmarish dystopia simulator. Because you know what? So many video games, you actually fight against the nightmarish dystopia. Sometimes wouldn't it be nice to be the nightmarish dystopia? Because, like, sometimes games sort of that, like, Beholder, which I really loved, sort of that. But Beholder also, because you were a person on the ground, you could sort of, like, you know, slightly twist the will of the state to make it a bit more nice and fluffy. But in Orwell, no, it just seems to be your basic just a nightmarish big brother let's watch everyone sort of person so that's good admittedly if you were creating a nightmarish dystopian let's watch everyone sort of program don't call it all well that's just asking for people to call it orwellian there's only 10 profile pictures and none of them look even remotely like me so i'm gonna go for her because she has a nice hat spot on never trust any place that's called freedom plaza if you're ever in the freedom plaza it means you live in a nightmarish dysto yeah you see Right bloody right there, you see, demonstrated quite clearly. Now, I'm not saying it would be better to have a nice walk through Nightmare Dystopia Plaza, but it would at least be more honest, yes. Oh, there's a character with blue hair with a police record. Dear, oh dear, keep an eye on her. And a bomb's gone off. Episode 1, the clocks were striking 13. Oh, then we got bigger problems than the bloody Nightmare Dystopia. We need to take our clocks back to the shop because something's gone horribly wrong with them. Hello, Symes. You're online. Good. Right, I'm guessing you're going to tell me how to help with the Nightmare Dystopia. Together, we will form both the first and last line of defense against terrorism. There's a couple of lines in the middle that basically boil down to community outreach, trying to cooperate with local communities and generally taking part in soft police work. But we don't talk about those because those don't involve a really, really awesome computer system. So I've got a reader tool that lets me see stuff that I need to read in order to get information. Lovely. So our leading newspaper, the National Beholder, okay fine, let's get our news from the bloody propaganda pages, why bloody not? Okay, that's the first thing you would not do, alright? If you were actually telling me that I need to be like an objective, independent adjudicator who needs to like build up a case against someone, then obviously I would not immediately go to a newspaper that blatantly has bias and an editorial line. I'd need to get my information for an objective source. I'm beginning to doubt that we're not actually the good guys, Symes. Right, over to the propaganda piece, lovely. And a bomb obliterates Freedom of Morian kills three. Quite frankly, I'm amazed it only killed three. Like, there were clearly like six people saying right next to where I came. That was a hell of a weak bomb. So the city's bomb turned bomb in the Freedom Plaza. According to official police reports, can't trust them. Three people killed, at least five bystanders severely wounded. Lovely. Triggered a short distance away with a cell phone signal, police received unmarked letter with the thoughts are free previously. Okay, fine. Although bear in mind in the same newspaper, there's clearly some form of other violence going on for unrelated reasons, so you know, we've clearly annoyed a lot of people here. Right, over here, unknown person. We need to figure out who did it, and I'm guessing you just want me to pin it on the blue-haired girl, right? So the profile holds all known information on those we investigate. The file you've opened is our main suspect. She is completely unknown. Okay, the blue-haired woman, fine. You want me to pin it on the blue-haired woman. Here we are, Cassandra Watergate. Arrest record, so yeah, she was spotted nearby just before the bomb went off, and she previously had been arrested, so we're just going to assume it's her. Okay, then. Call these elements data chunks, pull those out, put them into a single file related to her. So I'm basically just building a great big description of her in order to potentially come up with like a motive or what have you. So first things first, of course, we now know what her name is. Drag that over here, pull it into her file, and now there's going to be a name there. Spot on. Suspect was arrested on site after Officer Franklin had been struck by an unknown object and became unresponsive. The protesters at the origin of the assault were forcibly moved when the suspect was found kneeling and weeping on the ground. When asked to lay on the ground with her hands behind her back, the suspect cooperated immediately. So basically, there's literally no evidence whatsoever she actually did the thing. She threw the projectile that hit a police officer. In fact, no one saw her do it, and she cooperated fully and was weeping and upset. So probably she didn't do it. There's literally no evidence whatsoever this was her. And the other bit of information we've got there, of course, is we do have one picture. So pull the picture in. We now have a name and a face, potentially, at least of someone who is a suspect. And previous charge against her assault on a police officer, albeit... Yeah, charged, but presumably never actually convicted, I would guess, given there's basically zero evidence. So, in it goes. Lovely. And because we've added that, a new document has become available. 
So she was protesting that the government were going too far with stripping away liberties and invading privacy, and she was right, because I'm doing this right now. But sure, let's just move that over to her file and add that to her police record. Marvellous. Surely not a coincidence. That's... It's just a big plaza in the middle of a city. Alright, Symes? Okay, you are the bad guy. I'm going to not allow this to continue. So, let's gather some more information here. So, she was an artist by profession. Move that over there. So, we've now got ourselves an occupation. Lovely. One who just street art by blowing memorials to pieces by the gentle Symes. Alright, you and your sarky presumptions of guilt are not helping. So, that's all the information here at a new start. Now, I'm going into this case blind. The Orwell Ethical Codex dictates that investigators like yourself are the only people allowed to access the documents of target persons. Advisors like me only get to see the data provided by the investigators. We then draw conclusions and request action. Fine. So I can basically decide to hand over or withhold certain information based on whether I think she's actually guilty or not. I see. Gotcha. You can hit disable on any data chunk you do not want to pass on to Orwell. However, some data chunks may be necessary to progress on the case. Right, got it. So, having done that, we've now... Ah, because we know she's an artist, we can now go over to her Tumblr or whatever. And now we've got ourselves... Well, we've got ourselves a new picture. Let's just update the picture there. There we are. That's a much nicer picture. Now she looks much, much happier. So, I am Cassie. She's a colourful inhabitant of the Wonderland right behind a rainbow. That's probably not a real location. I'd say we should probably just disable that right now. So she found the courage to quit her dull day job and focus on her art career and put her stuff on port.folio. Fine, handpick selection of her latest work. You can browse through me the arrows on the left and right side of the pictures below. So, okay, we know that she quit a previous job to become an artist, so that's actually... Do we have a date? On this, no, we don't have a date, unfortunately, so we can't say when she actually quit her job. Still, let's update that. Fine. Interesting. We should find out what that job was. Indeed, we should. So, because I know she quit a previous job, I can now, therefore, presumably access new documents telling me what that job was, because the computer will just, like, start searching for them. So, we have got ourselves a... Yeah, you can send her a message on her Utel account, the Cassie 92 that's a useful alias. Upload that. That's purely factual, no reason not to upload that. And now we've got the chat handle, we can actually spy on the conversations on that account. Beautiful. And that has unlocked the listener. Conversations will appear whenever they are started, so now I can start spying. This is just reading information online. I can also spy on other things that are being said online there. So, my loved furball Kikiko, uh, definitely the only family I need. Okay, implying problems with the family, but I can't actually highlight that one. That beauties me, I was never sure about the title though, The Businessman's Forgotten Daughter, or Victim of Traditionalism in Pink, what do you think? Okay, fine, so Daughter of Entrepreneurs, well not necessarily, just Daughter of People Who Work in Business, but okay, fine, whatever, we'll just add that in regardless. Daughter of Entrepreneurs, and a Christmas present for my darling has some form of relationship, unless of course she painted it for the cat. Also... Do we know who that is? Presumably that is the darling. Admittedly, giving someone as a present a picture of themselves suggests they are a narcissist, but whatever. We will go and upload it right now. Beautiful. So, yeah, we're just adding all of this in bit by bit. Here we go. Over to the listener. So, session with an unknown person. Okay, so, ah, we're literally watching it as it actually was being done. Hey, you. Hey, Jossie. Can't seem to find my credit card. I assume you took it, right? Uh, you got me Sherlock. Oh, she just stole some person's credit card. Well, you're a dick. I'm in the middle of buying all of Bonton with that platinum card I lifted from your desk. Can't stop me now. Okay, she's officially lost any sympathy she had for me. She's stolen someone's credit card and she's using it to go on a spending spree. Luckily for you, I don't mind you going on a splurge as long as you pick up some wine for dinner. Wine, what does Joseph Langley, my fearless attorney and all-round badass, have in mind this time? Prob's just a business call from one of his favourite clients. Okay, actually, yes, that's exactly what's going to happen. Very serious business, Cassandra. I thought as much. Right, hang on. So, Jossie is presumably Joseph Langley, so we know who this person is, I would guess. Guess I better pick up a shitload of wine. You'll have to get this client of yours pretty buzzed to handle all that business. One bottle should be fine. She's a lightweight. Okay, this is this is just getting more and more sinister because I suspect now attorney is potentially a euphemism for something. 
and he's trying to get someone drunk on wine and some of those party pills. Oh, this is just getting weird. This is getting really, really bloody weird. Guess you shouldn't pick up those party pills from Big Pharma, AK, my parents. Okay, so now we know, uh, yeah, daughter of entrepreneurs, particularly in the pharmaceutical industry. Fine. Watergate Pharma Entrepreneurs, that does ring a bell, says Symes. Okay, that's presumably new stuff becoming available as we go along here. But, yeah. Okay, this is creepy right here. Yeah, you know what? I think Joseph Langley, we do indeed need to create a new profile for you. And the game is taking this seriously, saying that Joseph Langley is indeed her lawyer and she is a client. But, one, why has an artist got a lawyer? Two, how does an artist afford a lawyer who she speaks to on a regular basis? And three, what sort of lawyer would just openly talk about getting people drunk and doing drugs? In a society where they know there's huge amounts of state observation. No. No, this doesn't seem to stack up. Well, let's move it over anyway. Joseph Langley, supposedly a lawyer. So we have a profile for a related person accessed via the profiler. Beautiful. So we've got a new person here. And she did indeed steal a credit card, but apparently, like, he was fine with it, so okay, whatever. Wait, she stole the credit card of her lawyer, really? Yeah, I'm surprised too, Symes. I don't think this guy's really a lawyer. I think this might all just be code or something. We should be able to track the credit card of this Langley down and lock it for him. Done. No need to thank me, Mr. Langley. Yeah, there's something very, very wrong with this conversation. But all right, back over here in that case. Ah, we've just got our first conflicting data chunk. So if two bits of data are odds with each other, those will be shown as conflicted. When you extract one of the data chunks containing a conflict, the other will become invalid immediately. I'd highly recommend you clarify the context of the conflict before you proceed. This is your decision. Once information has been passed, there's no way to reverse your choice. Right, okay. So what's going on here then? So one, okay, we do have confirmation that Joseph Langley is indeed a lawyer with a massive forehead. So Cassandra Watergate was indeed, yeah, the case was thrown out because of lack of evidence. So hang on, why is that a conflict? That's pretty much what I assumed anyway. So criminal case closed due to lack of evidence or there's conflict with another data chunk in procedure closing raises manipulation suspicions. Wait, what? But this article is procedure closing Rage's manipulation suspicion. Yeah, show me the conflict here. Okay, so... Ah! Right, it's two bits of evidence within the same article that are conflicting, I see. So the problem we've got here is uh, the case is closed due to lack of evidence, but also there's another speculation on the same article saying actually the wealth found of the accused might have influenced the outcome in her favour. But... In all fairness, if, like, it went to trial and was thrown out, literally it was closed due to lack of evidence, then speculation that her family might have actually tweaked in her favour is completely irrelevant and doesn't matter. Like, the factual fact of the matter is, the case was closed due to lack of evidence. That is simply true. So that now goes in there. Fine. That's what I figured. Pity the CCTV feed didn't actually help. Meanwhile, over here, yes, now we've got the Watergate Pharmaceuticals piece. And we've got ourselves company, jobs, products. So enriches our lives with industry leading range of products, making an important contribution to your well being, such as Metherin Blue. Always take your Metherin Blue. Uh, various bits and pieces there. Fine. Try a couple of different pages. Look at the company. Watergate's been inseparable from progression and improvement to pharmaceuticals for 80 years. I'm guessing that is going to be her dad, then potentially, and her terrifying, terrifying mother. Lovely. And this is interesting. We've got ourselves a different photo here. Junior COO, Chief Operating Officer. Carrying the family tradition to the next generation, Alice and Bruno's daughter Cassandra will soon be joining the executive ranks. Her business acumen and unique flair will write the next chapter of our 85 year strong legacy. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure she wants to. But let's upload the nice picture of her. The bare minimum here. So yeah, we'll get there. There we go. That actually looks better. Now, we know that she's well. We know that she's going to be junior COO. I suspect she was given that job without really asking for it or wanting it. But regardless, if it's on the website, it is actually true. So appointed to be COO of the pharmaceutical company, probably by one of her parents. Yes, almost certainly. 
and documents you've already reviewed may be updated from time to time as events unfold. The reader will notify you when that happens. Lovely. And there's also a new article in the newspaper. Hang on, hang on. First, we've just got to establish their parents there. Let's just get that in there. So now we know who her parents were. Lovely. Here we go. Confirmation as to what she was saying earlier that she'd quit her job. We're urgently looking for a chief operating officer to replace the retired, formerly appointed predecessor. I mean, like... That's really not gonna fly in some ways to my mind. Like, you know, if you've been working at a company, if a company's 80 years old and people have been there their whole lives, and then like, you know, the boss's daughter, while still at a young age, is just brought in as the COO, a very, very senior position. Like, who's gonna report into her and actually take her seriously? Cause COO, various like head of products and whatever, will be reporting to her. How are they going to report to her? How is she going to evaluate them? She can't do any of that. She'd be bloody useless. Yeah, you know what? It's probably best she just went, to be honest. So, we know, therefore, that she is formerly the junior CEO. Well, I guess junior COO, so that's fine. Get her in there. Lovely. Okay, new headline in the newspaper has just become available. Crime rate continues to drop. Not sure how that's necessarily relevant to this case, but all right. Uh, the safety bill. Okay, we know about the safety bill. Of course, that's what she protested against previously. So crime rates have been continuously declining over the past several years as a direct result of the implementation of the safety bill. No, no, no. Correlation does not guarantee causation. For goodness sake, you are a terrible newspaper. Let's just click through to that, by the way. So yeah, you see? You see right here how crime was already declining when you were actually flipping elected, and then it was already declining when the safety bill was passed, and then just kept declining. Like, okay, fine, at a slightly accelerated rate, but only for one year. After that point, the trend downwards was exactly the same as before you were elected to office. Dear, oh bloody dear, the party. I mean, really, this makes them just a very, very bad dystopian government, because what you obviously ought to do is cut off the chart, like right here, and simply say, oh, look, look how high crime was. Oh, crime was so, so bloody high. And then, look, we came in and we sorted it out. Damn it, we got it going down. And then the safety bill made it accelerate. Then just, yeah, just basically have that chart. Just have the 2009 to 2012 portions. Then it will be a great chart for you. But no, you put up the bit that pretty much disproves the exact point you're trying to demonstrate. You're so bad at this. I could run a dystopian government so much better than these idiots. In fact, down below, we've got potentially more interesting information. A terrorist incident in 2000. 2008 was the consequence of, yeah, previously a neighbouring country, Parjes, a region torn by civil unrest for years, previously the nation, I'm not sure this nation actually has a name, I know one of the cities is called Bonton, and we're just the nation, but yeah, 2008, or rather previous to that, they were occupying the nation, they pulled out, then there was a terrorist strike, then they moved straight back in again. Except crime per 100,000 started going down at the exact same time. So some of this crime might have been civil disobedience related to the occupation. Potentially the drop in crime after 2008 could have been people coming together slightly after an external terrorist attack on the nation. Hmm, could be. Speculation, can't prove any of it for now. Right, what else have we got? Cassandra's timeline. So status, you're invited to tea inside the rabbit hole. Yeah, you really do like your Alice in Wonderland imagery, don't you? Let's not go with that picture though. <laughs> Let's just disable that. It puts her in a bit of a bad light. So we've got ourselves a birth. She was born in 1992. I feel like throwing her away just because that means she's too bloody young, bloody young people. Right, bunch of interests there. Fine, art, music and activism. Let's just shove that in there. That's fine. That's factual and correct. March 1st, 2017 was when she quit her job. Fine. Jake Clefton, whoever that is, uh, who's going to pay for your stuff now? Mommy and daddy won't like this. Listen, Jake, I'm not daddy's little girl. My aunt already got me a lot of money, more than enough to pay all my bills. Don't you worry about me. Okay, so she's not just like a wannabe artist. She's actually relatively successful in selling pieces. Got it. Despised puppets of the state, you have finally managed to destroy us entirely. There's nothing left to do but congratulate you. These are my personal wishes to you from the deepest abyss of my heart. Flip all of you government lackeys. Well, to be honest, well, opposes the government. Well, it's not really relevant. I don't really see how that's in any way relevant to making the case about her, to be honest. I mean, okay, fine, she'd previously stated an opposition to the government, but, well, that might be a crime in this bloody country. No, I'm going to disable that for now. As far as I'm concerned, that's not pertinent to the case. Okay, sweetie, what's the matter? That totally doesn't sound like you. We haven't hung out for ages. You've got to get out from time to time. You'd feel much better. Mary, just shut your freaking mouth, okay? I'm not in the mood for your stupid act. I told you again and again, 
cannot deal with this right now. Okay, you know what? I'm really sorry that I still care about my best friend no matter how often she decides to give me the cold shoulder. But in that case, that's in the past now. Okay, so in a relationship with this guy, fine. Confirmation that she's dating the lawyer. Unsurprising, really, given she stole his bloody credit card. In fact, quite frankly, I really feel like, yeah, he shouldn't be cool with that. Not cool with that at all. Right, now what's the conflict we've got going on here? Broken friendship, conflict with an unknown data chunk. Well, if it's an unknown data chunk, how is it a conflict? All right, fine. Let's just leave that for now. We'll come back to when we find whatever the conflicting data chunk is. So henceforth, Cassandra shall be known to the world as Cassarthus, which is a terrible, terrible nickname that you have to think about for a minute. But no, I'm not really sure that's relevant. Ah, uh, you know what? Potentially, if we like found that name mentioned online, it could be useful for finding some information. So we'll shove that in there. An alias name known on the web. Fine. Good, good. That's the spirit kiddo. Now I'd like to invite you to our little activist group. Okay, that might be useful, sure. We'll put you in as a person of interest, Harrison O'Donnell. And we're starting to see, yeah, the relationship of Cassandra and Mary going a bit sour. As time goes by, Cassandra started getting into, like, punk or rock or whatever, I don't know, music. And Mary wasn't really into that. Mary wasn't really into that at all. So they started kind of drifting apart and not going to the same thing. Ah, we might well have found the conflict here. So, yeah. So Mary, best friend, but obviously not anymore. Clearly they fell out. So we're going to disable that. And instead we go up here. And yes, indeed, we can now just go and shove this one in because broken friendship is indeed what was true. Right, head over here. The party and projects. We've got this. Oh, no, sorry. That's the thing I already saw. Right, back over to the listener. Let's see what we can find here because now presumably we're going to have new chats on account of the fact that we know one of the handles she was using online. Back with her boyfriend, Joseph Langley. Let's see what we've got here. Hey, did you hear about the Freedom Plaza bombing? Ah, this is happening live, in fact. Okay, fine. Yeah, don't remind me. You know I have a history with that place. Okay, let's see if you're going to say anything of interest or incriminating whatsoever. Come on, Cassie, give me something to work with here. Already flipping me up enough that I have to catch a bus from there every day. Too many bad memories, and now I was there just moments before this happened. Ugh, I should never have gone to that damn protest. Darling, you don't justify yourself to anybody, especially not to me. So, we know she catches a bus from there every day. We can use CCTV to know that she genuinely, like, she wasn't just visiting there as a one-off thing. She goes there on a regular basis. I was so happy when the Goldfells accepted me into thought. I desperately wanted to go to prove my worth to the cause, Think of it this way, if you'd not gone to the protest, you would never have been wrongfully indicted, and then we would have never met. Yeah, I never would have been called a terrorist in all the papers. You're not a terrorist, ain't I? You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, damn it, what? Your card's not working, can't buy anything. Oh, yes, because Simon's actually shut it down. Marvellous. You've gone bankrupt or something. Cassie, you're not a very nice person. I don't like you. Right, and presumably this refers to... Yeah, the when Goldfells, presumably that's the guy, Goldfells, co-member of the Thought. No, I stopped with the chant for just a second. Here we are, yeah, let's just add that in. Start saying it together, we might be able to look that up, get some new information in the reader. An activist group called Thought. Okay, who is Goldfells? We should find that out. I've got an important appointment tonight. It's surprisingly out of schedule. I can't postpone it. You've got to be kidding me. I'm sorry, darling. We'll see you tomorrow. You always have an appointment. Appointment here, appointment there, appointment every flipping where. Okay, so she's basically incredibly immature and a brat. Got it. How can you constantly do this to me? He's working, all right? He's got an actual job that has appointments. Shut up, Cassie. I don't like you. Why don't you send her to prison because she's annoying? Darling, please calm down. Have you taken your methorin? Okay, on medication. Fine, should make a note of that. That's simply a factual matter. Lovely, and I'm guessing methorin is one of her parents' drugs. Is that the only thing that matters to you? That I'm on flipping happy pills all day. Darling, please, it's nothing like you know it. So I keep my mouth shut whenever you leave me hanging. Okay, you are a real brat. You are such a brat. I'm going to update your picture with a much less flattering one. Yeah, she's an immature brat and storms off and refuses to talk to her boyfriend. Right, lovely. What a lovely person. Right, uh, back over to... Yeah, there's no new chat sessions. Back over to the reader, and I'm guessing... If we go back to... Yes, indeed. Products on the Watergate website. How is she still getting hold of those? Antidepressant helps stabilise your emotions. Fine, so therefore, well... She might be depressive, or... She might just be addicted to some form of drug when she doesn't actually have a medical condition. 
either is possible. So here we are, the thought, the thoughts are free. Now, was that not exactly what was written on the letter that was handed over to the police? Hang on, hang on, back over to the headline here. I swear, yes, indeed. An anonymous letter containing the first three stanzas of a German folk song, the thoughts are free. Right, I think we've got a connection there, okay. But apparently I can't highlight that, because who I'm playing as is not as perceptive as I am, and that's bloody saying something, because I've made that connection. So, let's start at the bottom and work our way through here. Let's learn about the thoughts. No, some of these have become archived, fine, and you can't access them anymore. All of the ones that are archived, yep, all of them are archived. So there's only one that's actually available. What do we have here? And we now know that is her. Well, probably. Anyway, and if we click through on that, that'll take us to more articles she's written, hopefully. Now we've got a conflicting piece of information we don't know what it's conflicting with yet. So Cassie claims we were there because we wanted a peaceful protest. We've always been against violence. Okay, that may or may not be true. We'll have to see about that. Though she just raised an interesting question. If there's cameras all over Freedom Plaza, how is it that none of them actually saw what actually happened during the protest? Well, I guess there's a lot of people floating around. People might have had flares producing smoke or banners in the way. I guess it would be fairly easy for someone to be hidden in the crowd. So let's click on her username, see if that takes us anywhere. Her account, one article, registered September 2016, last login, April 2017. And we've got ourselves a... Ah, we already know that, fine. So we've already got that. That's how we found this account in the first place. Lovely. So back off here. And she links through to a different article by Goldfels. Okay, whoever this is, this is of interest. Now there's a German folk song called The Thoughts Are Free, and indeed it was sent to the police on the same day a few hours before the explosion, which is uh, a little on the suspicious side. Nothing in his article we can use though, let's go through to his account. Right, so, account Goldfels administrator, articles 5. Okay, no contact details, but a little bit more at least. Fine. Okay. So, we still don't know what this bit's conflicting against, so we'll just have to leave that be for now. But we now have a picture, potentially, for Goldfells. So, she's just posted something new here. Finally, someone who has the grit and explosives to show how futile surveillance is. Sees assault justified for showing the futility of surveillance. No! That's not what that's saying at all. Finally, someone who has the grit and explosives to show how futile surveillance is. She's... That doesn't mean she actively supports violence. Well, it means she is more upset by the surveillance than she is by the bomb blast. That does not fundamentally mean that she believes violence is justified in all circumstances. Or that violence is... Oh, what does it? Oh, that's actually quite interesting. It does demonstrate that in her hierarchy, then it is acceptable that there are casualties and violence to bring down surveillance. That is true. So as a result, that has to go. That has to go in because that is a factual statement she just made that is pertinent to the case and building the plan against her. Looking at what you've extracted so far, we're dealing with a potentially dangerous personality. No, you're dealing with someone who's got some extreme views. We have literally no evidence whatsoever that she actually did it. What we found so far is good and interesting. I think we should be searching for something a little more concrete. I agree. Let's do that. Over to the listener. We've got ourselves a new session. Juliet Carrington. The name rings a bell. I think that might have been someone who commented on her blog at some point. So, what have we got here? Hey, Cassie. What have we got going on? Cassie, I just wanted to know. Ooh, I suspect Juliet Carrington actually has suspicions. Your post on timelines about this assault. You really shouldn't write something like that. Really, Jules, you're going to get preachy to me about that stupid post, are you? No, I just want to know what's wrong, Cassie. It's nothing just between the two of you. Yeah, just between the two of you. I am definitely not here. It's just to let off steam, you know. Actually, that's fair. She's just been held for two weeks on a false charge by the state. She probably is a little bit steamed. That's, you know, acceptable. It's because of what happened, isn't it? Yeah, and lots of other shit today. This bombing stirred up all of this crap again. You know what I did. Oh, also, we know previously, potentially, she hadn't... Wait, did she say she had or hadn't taken her drugs when she was speaking to her boyfriend? She might just have not taken 
her drugs and thus might have been a bit on the depressed. Okay, there might be various chemical and circumstantial reasons why she'd be a bit extreme today and it might not represent her true opinions on a more calm day. Fine. What happened there wasn't your fault. You hurt that officer to save me and you succeeded. You mustn't forget about that. That was so brave. How could it not have been my fault? Juliet, I smashed the freaking skull of a father of two children because I lost it. Flip, flip, flip. Who knows what would have happened if you hadn't stopped him. This is why you should really remove this post. I feel like an asshole, the worst kind of asshole. I might be free, but not rightly so. I'm not innocent. Okay. We have a confession from her. And... Hmm. Okay, right. I mean, she did it. She absolutely did it. She blatantly did it. That does not prove by any stretch of the imagination that she did the bombing, but she did in a moment of something, in a mad moment perhaps, not necessarily representative of her character on a day-to-day -day basis or what she'd do when she like, you know, had days and weeks to sit down and plan whether to do a bombing. That doesn't prove that, but this is true. That is simply a factual matter that she has smashed in the skull of someone and he is stuck in a coma and he's got a family and uh, it's fair if that is true that she does actually face justice for that because uh, okay I'm getting the feeling that, that sort of emotion is the sort of emotion I'm supposed to be feeling in this game which is I'm not sure what the right thing to do is but I'm handing it over. She openly admitted such a violent act. This is perfect, we can arrest her and open the investigation again. Assuming this is all admissible in court, I assume it is in this crazy dystopian country. And we've got a new session with Juliet Carrington, in fact. Okay, what have we got here? I thought about what you said. Maybe you're right. I should take the post down. You should, yes, but it's a bit late for that, unfortunately. It'd be better, believe me, wait a second, someone is at the door. BRB, I'm sorry you're not. <laughs> I suspect you're spending the rest of your life in a secret state prison so long! By the way, how's your boyfriend? You're still together? You haven't been talking about him much lately? Yep, we already know about him. That's absolutely fine. Not as much as before. Hello? Look, she went to the door. Like, if it's flipping Jehovah's Witnesses or someone who wants to talk about the Liberal Democrats, it's gonna take a while. I'll inquire if it went well with arresting Miss Watergate. You did good in any case. Although we have no proof she's involved in the bombing, we might be able to question her. With that admission of guilt, she will serve some time. And I'm okay with that at the bare minimum. The fact that she does actually have to face what she did with the assault there. Just received confirmation she's in custody. Good work. Oh dear. I think we've just picked up a second explosion there. Take a look. Yes, I saw the news. It's up there. Right, so we've got ourselves a new explosion. Well, obviously it was them. Because literally the note that was sent to the police before the bombing is on their website. How did you not... I saw that coming! Alright, I am so much smarter than you, Simons. I need your bloody job. Right, we've got ourselves a second bombing, obviously. This time at a university. This is horrible, and obviously the second bombing couldn't be her. She was in custody at the time. So these assaults are connected, and of course, not to her. So you did good today. You can log off and get some rest by clicking the button at the top right of the desktop. Try and get some sleep. I have a feeling the next few days are going to be trying at best. I agree, Symes, though. Really, yeah, I could have... I could have told you that. Like, the most pertinent bit of information in this entire case was, hey, the thing that was specifically written in the letter that was sent to the police was on the website of the guys who aren't her. So... You know, maybe you should have dealt with that a little bit earlier, but whatever the bloody hell, eh? So there we are. That is the first day of Orwell, and we're definitely doing a bit more of this. This is good. I like this. This is interesting and creepy and full of moral dilemmas that are actually genuinely quite difficult to get your head around. And I like moral dilemmas that are a bit difficult to get your head around. It's up there are my favourite things you find in gaming. So, tomorrow, we will have a bit more of this. We will go on to the next day. And we will figure out more about this. And why don't we just arrest Goldfells right now? Like, we should just arrest the people who have the website that's got the quote that was sent to the police just before the bombings went off. Could we just go? Let's just arrest them. Hopefully, we'll arrest them tomorrow. We shall see about that, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Orwell. Pretty damn good, I'd say. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, did people just vote out democracy? Hang on, what have you just done? Oh, go on, let's have the greatest Oktoberfest ever. Yay! Spain and Russia have announced a new alliance as a result of the warmongering of certain Central European countries. Oh, well, excuse me! 
My leader from now on, no weaklings will stand in the way of this country's path to glory. Oh God, Germany, not again!